everybody, Shannon Petrovich with Therapist Talks. 10 Fair Fighting Rules for Couples. Even in a boxing match, there are rules and protective gear and even a referee to create the boundaries for a fair fight. With so many couples, their conflicts seem more like a cage fight. No rules, no protection, and each going for the kill moves at every opportunity. When this is the person you love the most and the relationship that you want to have last, these fights feel terrible and they make no sense. With some boundaries and parameters, your conflicts can actually be productive and you can both win. A caveat before we start, obviously if your fights are violent, you need to get out and sort things out from a place of safety. And secondly, it's always best if you have your own therapist. But my videos are for those who may never have access to therapy and want some insights and strategies that they can put into practice for themselves. The most important foundational concept I want to start with is that our goal should always be to resolve the conflict in a way as to better understand each other and to grow closer as a couple. Let's start with some basic communication skills. I feel, I wish, I'm willing to, and my boundaries are. When we start our communications with I feel, we're taking ownership of what is going on for ourselves. I can feel upset and share why without blaming that upset on my partner. I can feel hurt and share why without blaming and shaming my partner. The next piece, I wish. The I wish statement gives us the opportunity to ask for what I would wish from my partner. This is not a demand, and my partner can do what they want with it. The I'm willing to part lets me take ownership of what I'm willing to do about the situation. And lastly, my boundaries gives me the space to set parameters if my boundaries are being violated. Here's some examples to help this make more sense. A woman feels her husband is not spending enough time with her and is distracted when they both get home. She can say, I'm feeling sad and lonely and there seems to be a lot of distance between us. I wish we could spend more time together and that you would just give me a hug and spend a few minutes talking with me in the evenings when we get home. I'm willing to give you time and space to unwind on your own too. In this instance, she may not have a boundary so she would just leave it there. This will come across so much better than that old silent treatment followed by the, you never spend any time with me. Another example, a man feels frustrated that he has to go to his in-laws for events and his mother-in-law treats him poorly. He could say, I'm frustrated we have to spend time with your mother. I wish we could spend holidays on our own or at least minimize the time there. I'm willing to go and do my best to ignore her mean remarks and to stop fueling it the best I can. But my boundary is that if she's really getting under my skin, I'm going to let you know that I need to go. We can either take separate cars and you can agree to go or you can agree to go with me if that happens. It's up to you. Again, this will go over much better than the I can't stand your mother and going over there sucks. That's not a solution oriented thing and that's going to lead to a real cage fight. All right, on to the fair fighting rules. Number one, focus on the issue at hand. 90% of the time, uh, the issues are about mattering. So look at that first. Is the surface issue pointing at hurt feelings, feelings of neglect, feeling criticized or put down, feeling left out or unheard, or feeling like you're not a priority? If these are the underlying issues, talk about time together, focus on each other, and other ways of deepening and strengthening your relationship. So often, the couples that are bickering over small things, they don't realize the underlying problem is really a question of mattering. When you spend more time or better quality time together, you will often resolve much of what is going on un under the surface. Number two, don't drag up the past. History lessons and lectures are one of the most toxic ways people emotionally beat up each other uh, and when they're in conflict. This usually involves words like always and never um, and other exaggeration, exaggerations like that. The, they create more conflict and distance as you start to fight over whether you really always do that or never do that. Um, so a basic rule about always and never is that always is always an exaggeration and never is never true. So when you find yourself or your partner using either of those words, stop and agree to take those out of the way. Number three, ultimatums versus boundaries. Boundaries are how we set parameters for how we're to be treated in a relationship. They're important and yet they're more of an art than a science. We practice and often have to adjust them accordingly throughout our relationships. Some con common boundaries in regards to fair fighting might be if you talk to me in that angry tone of voice or with profanity, I'm going to leave the room and take some space until you can calm down. 
or when we're talking and the kids come home, we need to stop until they're in bed and then we can talk without drawing them into it. Or when you storm off and then don't want to talk or resolve anything, I'll give you some space, but then I'm going to bring up the issue again when we're both calmed down. Number four, intensity. Increasing intensity or escalating the conflict and using harsh and profane language are really designed to be hurtful and to put a stronger emphasis on what you're trying to say. If our goal, remember, is to resolve the conflict and to grow closer and more connected, then intensifying is really counter to this goal. Sometimes this is done inadvertently when we really feel increasingly upset about the situation. But it's also done manipulatively when someone wants to intimidate or bully the other into seeing things their way. Intensity is not productive. It puts the other in a fight, flight, or freeze mode, and nothing good happens from any of those three options. For this reason, think of your intensity on a 1 to 10 scale. 1 being very calm and 10 being screaming lunatic <laughs> mode. Keep yourselves in the 1 to 5 range. If either of you gets to a 6, stop and take a break. Nothing good happens between 6 and 10, and often a lot of damage occurs that can't be easily undone. This includes either being intentionally hurtful, or if this occurs, just walk away and say, we can talk about this later when we both calm down. This is not productive, and we don't want to do more damage by continuing this right now. Number five, don't take your filters offline. So our higher cortex is where our higher thought processes, judgment centers, and our filters live. Any type of drug or alcohol can literally take your entire higher cortex offline. What you're left with are the lower survival mode uh, parts of your brain that only know how to fight, flight, or freeze. When you or your partner or both are in this monkey mind, look out. This is a setup for a cage fight to be sure. Again, lots of damage can be done from this place, and much of it cannot be easily undone. Number six, don't try to read each other's minds. You can't do it, and you create a lot of chaos when you try. People spend a lot of times guessing what is going on with the other person. And let's face it, we're always wrong. The guesses pile up, and people even react to what they've made up about the situation. This is such a mess. Often when I have a couple in my office, they've literally spent years doing this to each other. When they talk about what's actually bothering them and they get down to the brass tacks, they often find out how each other feel the same way as, they, as each of them do. They're both lonely, sad, and missing each other. And they both want the same things. They want to feel loved, cared for, and that they would both pay more attention to each other the way they did when they were first together. When you simply talk about what you feel and listen to what your partner talks about, their emo own emotions, you can accomplish and resolve a lot. Remember the I feel, I wish, I'm willing to. Number seven, resolution means a win-win. If you're each sharing what you're feeling, what you wish, and what you're willing to do, and if you go back and forth until you find solutions, and if you keep the intensity low throughout your talk, you will leave this encounter feeling closer and more connected. If you're more invested in being right or in winning, then you will both lose as a couple. If you want to succeed as a couple, you have to keep the goal in mind to seek to understand and to search for resolution. Number eight, boundaries. It's critical you both respect each other's basic boundaries. If intensity is building, either one has the ability to call a timeout. It can be for five minutes or a few hours or even overnight. But then you need to come back and keep trying. When you sit down again, commit to keeping the intensity low and using I feel statements. Write things down if it helps keep you on track. And if the intensity flares again, try to remind each other and calm down, but walk away again if you have to. Number nine, a word of caution about makeup sex. If you've reached resolution, this is a wonderful part of how we express our love for each other and the growth that we've just experienced in our closeness. However, Many couples try to avoid conflict through sex or even placate or manipulate each other with sex in the midst of a conflict. This type of makeup sex will poison your sexual relationship with each other, possibly damaging it permanently. When lovemaking becomes manipulation or pressure or placation, it's creating resentment and complete disinterest in sex over time. If you or one, uh, if either one of you has no interest in sex, ask yourselves if you've made these mistakes. So make sure you're both feeling a clear sense of emotional love and closeness 
before you initiate lovemaking. Anything else might be fun in the moment, but the damage it causes is just not worth it. And lastly, do something reconnective. Whatever it is you both enjoy to doing together, do that. Even if you've done a great job staying focused, keeping the intensity low, using the I feel statements, and sorting through the conflict to resolution, you're both probably feeling exhausted and bruised. So support, encourage, and take care of each other in fun and relaxing ways. Take a walk, a drive, watch a movie, turn on music and dance in your living room. Anything that reconnects you and makes you want to work things out. If you've appreciated this video, please like and subscribe to this channel. Also, please share it on your social media. The more we can share these insights and strategies with others, the better our world could be. Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you again soon.